Well, greetings and welcome to part five of our video series in which we scratch build a, a Supro 6422 amp. But before we get started, we have to discuss a, a small change in the plans. Uh, in response to a viewer observation, I thought about adding the tubes into the bottom of the chassis, and the way it was drawn at seven and three quarters inches down to the midline of the speaker, the tubes were going to protrude down so far that it made it very difficult to stash the foot switch into the cabinet and also made the tubes vulnerable. So I decided to shorten the chassis up to six inches, taking away one and three quarters inches uh, from its height. Uh, which then meant that the tubes at two and a half inches would not even protrude below the magnet of the speaker to allow a pretty straight shot in here to stash parts. Second small modification is you have to shorten the metal chassis just a little bit to allow for the wrapping of the upholstery material around. Now a lot of manufacturers don't seem to do that. If you've ever tried to pull a chassis out of an amp, that's too tight, you know it's a nightmare. So I'm going to shorten the chassis one eighth inch on either side. That means that the metal I'm going to cut to make the chassis today is going to be 17 and a half inches wide. We're going to cut a rectangle that size and it's going to be one half, one half, three, three, and six for a total of 13 inches all the way around. So now let's go to the workshop and begin by cutting out a 13 by 17 and 1 half inch rectangle of 16 gauge sheet metal. Uh, we're out in the workshop now and here is the 2 foot by 4 foot remnant of 16 gauge rolled steel that I bought from a local metal store. It's way more than we need, but uh, since it was a remnant, uh, they offered it to me at a reasonable price, so I took it, figuring I could always use the rest later. 16 gauge is about 60 thousandths of an inch, which is pretty thick uh, and not easy to cut. But let's get started. We're going to have to cut out a 13 by 17 and 1 half inch rectangle that we'll use to bend uh, into shape for our chassis. First, I should comment that this is rather unusual uh, sheet metal in that it has a blued finish like gun bluing to retard rust. I've never used this before, so this should be a unique experience for all of us. I start off by measuring over 13 inches exactly. I scribe a line on the sheet metal and then using white pinstripe tape, I lay the tape down with the left side of the tape exactly along that scribed line. Now it should be noted that you don't have to go through all this cutting process. You can have the metal company actually uh, use a shear and cut your rectangle to exactly the size that you want. However, uh, since I'm doing this all myself by hand, I thought I would do it the hard way and demonstrate it for you. And it's going to give me the opportunity to use this new tool that I bought, which is a metal shear. It does just like what shears do except it does it with a really stout electric motor. Uh, this is the first time I've ever used it, so this should be a really exciting adventure. I thought it prudent to try out the uh, electric shear on a piece of scrap metal first. Uh, so here you'll get an idea of how it works. As you can see, it cuts very quickly. Uh, and straight as an arrow, and it leaves this really cute little curlicue of steel kerf uh, up above the cut. And now, in a matter of about 20 seconds, we've completed the long cut on our rectangle to build our chassis. As you can see, it's straight as an arrow, it's smooth, it's not really sharp, and we get this really dandy uh, kerf spring out that we can use as a valve spring in our 52 Chevy. Now, uh, if this looks like a useful tool that you'd like to add to your workshop, it's a model 68199 swivel head shear from our old friends at Harbor Freight. It costs under $50, and uh, people say, oh, well, Harbor Freight stuff doesn't have a lifetime warranty. Hey, I'm 68 years old, and lifetime warranties don't mean that much to me anymore. And besides, all I need is it for it to last for two cuts, and it's, and it's earned its keep. Okay, now I'm going to pull the tape off. And you can see that that cut 
is absolutely straight as it could be. Now as an alternate, if you want to make a cut like this, you could uh, use a cutoff wheel, bandsaw, a jigsaw, I guess you could use a hacksaw, and a plasma cutter. Now I've used all of those, and I've got to say, this is by far the easiest and best method that I've seen. So now we have our 13 by 17 and a half inch rectangle of 16 gauge steel and we're ready to start bending to form our chassis. Now, uh, bearing in mind that our chassis from the side will look like a capital C, we're going to start by bending these half inch uh, lips right here on the top and the bottom and step one will be to measure over one half inch and scribe a line along the 17 and a half inch side of our metal. Now the next step is to clamp the metal, the 17 and a half inch side, along the edge of either if you have a workbench or even two two by fours, bottom and top, but you see clamp it so that the one half inch uh, piece is protruding out exactly square with either the edge of the 2x4 or the edge of your table. Okay, and then on the top clamps you tighten them down really tight so that the metal can't move at all. It's almost like a diving board then protruding out one half inch of it. And then this is the Stone Age part. I'm going to use a small sledgehammer like this with a smooth face and I'm going to start tapping on that one half inch metal edge smoothly back and forth and gently bend it down so that it's bent 90 degrees down um, or, in per or in other words perpendicular to the main sheet. Now you keep that up until it's bent down 90 degrees. Also watch carefully to be sure that your line that you scribe stays exactly uh, along the edge of your brace and the table. Don't let the metal start to move on you. Then to smooth it you can take a block of steel like this and move along the edge and flatten the surface of the one half inch bent uh, piece. Now you can do a little detail work and all and, and fine tune it, but when you get through you should have a nice 90 degree uh, bend here with a one half inch flange against which we will secure the upper back panel of the uh, amplifier cabinet. Then we're going to flip it around and do exactly the same thing and bend a 90 degree bend here, a half inch back from the edge. So now we're set up here exactly like we were with the first bend and we're ready to make the second a 90 degree bend. Now if we've done everything right we have two one half inch 90 degree bends on the uh, long sides of our chassis. Now it's time to make the bends here in the middle and turn this into that capital C. Now since the top and bottom of the chassis are three inches wide, you scribe a three inch line from one edge, three inch line from the other, and then we're going to bend right along this line and form our capital C. So now our setup's just the same except instead of a half inch of metal protruding we've got three inches of metal protruding with the line perfectly aligned both with our top brace and then with our edge. If these are your 2 by 4s just make sure they're lined up perfectly above and below. And instead of hitting the metal with the hammer uh, directly as we did on the half inch edge, we're going to protect the metal and instead hit an old beat up 2 by 4 
if it seems a little reluctant to cooperate, just add a little heat along the line that's going to bend it down. Then finally, after all sorts of heating, cursing, beating, listening to complaints from the neighbors, you'll get your 90 degree bend. Then so you can see how it would be if you had clamped it in the vise, you would have your uh, two by four on the outside and then a, say a two by one or some other stout piece of wood on the inside and you could do your bend away from you. And now if you've Follow directions, you've got three bends done and now we need to do the fourth and final bend right here to give us our three inch lip and our six inch wide chassis. Now having completed our four 90 degree bends, uh, we now have that capital C that is the side view shape of our chassis. Now if you recall in the Supro video they used three quarter inch pine for the ends on their chassis. And that's just fine, but being a masochist at heart, I've decided to uh, install steel sides on mine. And the way they're made, you cut out a piece that's three inches wide and about seven inches long and then fold half inch over here, a half inch over here, so that your outside dimensions of the side piece are exactly six inches to fit inside your chassis. Here's a quick view of how I made the side pieces. I just pinched that half inch in the vise and then using a block of wood and that big hammer bent it over and tapped it down so that I have a nice 90 degree bend right here for my quarter inch flange. Now after you've done that there's all different ways to install them. If you have a drill you just drill holes you could put nuts and bolts, pop rivets, you could silver solder. In my case, I'm going to actually weld them in and I'll show you how that looks once I install this one. Okay, and here's this end piece with the welding done along the edges. And as you can see, it's immaculate inside. And that's about it for our chassis. It is rock solid and looks pretty darn good. I've started removing some of the bluing in here and, uh, because I was afraid it might interfere with my soldering and grounding. So I've got a little cosmetic work to do on this and then it's time to start cutting the holes and installing all the uh, components into this chassis. But first, just to be sure, I'm going to build the cabinet uh, around this so that I know it fits perfectly and then I'll have the cabinet to check uh, on clearance issues and uh, things of that sort. I'll know exactly where to place my controls on top, my tubes on the bottom, and where my power transformer can go uh, up here on this corner. So, so that's about it for this chapter on Stone Age chassis fabrication. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a couple other pointers I'm going to uh, leave you with and that is uh, I would never use 16 gauge again. It's a little too thick and hard to work with. You're probably better off with 18 gauge. Secondly, if you ask at a sheet metal place, they might do these brakes and bends for you. But when I say scratch built, I mean it. So I have to do everything. And uh, that's about it. Okay, so uh, I guess you could also buy the chassis uh, pre-made by some like Weber or some other company, if you wish. Um, but for the brave of heart, you, as you can see, you can make a really nice stout heavyweight chassis in your garage or workshop with a sledgehammer and some 2x4s. Okay, well, that's it. Over and out. I'll see you in uh, part six. Well, Rusty's busy barking at the tree pruners in the backyard, and Jack's taking a nap. So I guess for a little bonus feature, I'll do a walk around of my Jeep, as uh, quite a few viewers have requested. It's a 1971 CJ5 Jeep. I got it in 
partially disassembled and unrunning condition. As you can see, it's got the 33-inch uh, Goodyear Wrangler uh, tires with the rimlock wheels. We got the one of those off-road jacks mounted on the rear bumper and uh, a spare with a cover. It's got a full roll cage, including the windshield. So you can put the windshield down and not be beheaded if you ever roll the thing. All the gauges and a few extras. Pretty snazzy steering wheel and uh, original seats and upholstery. Got the KC headlights. Scoop on the hood for reasons that you will see in just a moment. And the nice big front bumper that you wish you could use in traffic to ram old people that are driving too slow. Got the transmission cooler and a big uh, thermostatically controlled electric fan which really comes in handy when you're just creeping along out in the desert. The engine is a Chevy 350 four bolt main truck engine with tube headers and a Edelbrock Performer 600 four barrel carburetor and Edelbrock air cleaner. The radiator is about twice the size of a normal Jeep radiator. And it has to be out here uh, when the desert temperatures will reach like 110 degrees. Transmission is a freshly rebuilt TH350 with a BNM hydro shifter. And uh, it's got the original Dana transfer case and differentials front and rear. Now if you're wondering, does it run? And I say, oh yes indeed. <laughs> Runs very well. So that's the 71 CJ5 Jeep where I spend a whole lot of my time when I'm not fabricating super amplifiers. Thanks for watching.